What's going on, guys? Will the Gutter Fighting Secrets again. So I put the poll out a number of weeks ago, and I asked you guys what you want to hear more about on the channel. And one of the things that I was surprised that I actually got a response was psychological self-defense, psychological warfare, things like this. This is right up my alley. And I honestly, it's right up everybody's alley because these days, mostly how all of our fighting is done, it's through words, right? I mean, unfortunately, if you're not good with your words, you're going to really fall behind in the, your own self-defense. <clears throat> a lot of the times, guys like us, we train, we get good with our hands, we get good with a lot of other things, weapons, whatever, you know, hacha, katana, right? But whatever, because that doesn't matter because we don't carry katanas no more, right? So... If you're not good with your words, you're really losing out. And I know there is a lot of interest um, in the martial arts community, especially by, you know, the more Chad type dudes, right? That <clears throat> we like to work out. We like to go to jujitsu. We like to get really good at solving problems <laughs> uh, with lethality. And we're quite, some of us are quite, you know, quite good at that. But when it comes down to actually confronting conflict walking head right into conflict generally you know at least within the civilized world it's with our words and a lot of martial artists really do lose out um because we're we're not walking around perfecting our silver tongue we're not walking around perfecting our million dollar mouthpiece we're walking around training hand-to-hand -hand combat how to kill people but like that's not really, that ain't the samurai days no more, ladies and gentlemen. I hate to break it to you. Like the code of Bushido, it's a good code to live by. It will never steer you wrong. But <laughs> you can't you can't take out your freaking uh, longsword no more and just duel somebody. I mean, it's just not done. I kind of wish it was sometimes, but it ain't. So we really have to put an emphasis in this. Now there's something that i like to really pay attention to when it comes to psychological warfare and that's just a buzz term i mean it's a real it's a real thing don't get me wrong but really what we're looking at is how to use our words for self defense right or how to defeat our enemies without fighting obviously we all know sun tzu said the highest form of martial arts is to crush your enemy without actually having to fight him didn't say it just like that, but took my artistic liberties with it. And it's more relevant today than ever. But what did he really mean by that? Right? How do you defeat your enemies without fighting them? Well, I mean, what he was talking about was using tactics to outmaneuver them and outsmart them and things like that. But psychologically speaking, we need to be doing the same thing. We need to be reading stuff on this, right? Like Robert Greene is one of the most valuable authors, in my opinion, out there because his stuff is modern. If you you if you read like Machiavelli, Art of War, The Book of the Five Rings, that stuff is great. Don't get me wrong. Every professional serious martial artist should be reading that. Every serious warrior scholar should be reading those things. But a lot of it doesn't exactly translate to modern days. Robert Greene is a modern author who takes all of these classics and puts them into terms where we can understand them and use them, quite frankly, today. You know, Bill Wolf, one of the guys out there that I highly respect, one of the only guys out there that I really, really, like, unwaveringly respect, um, is big on fuck Sung Tzu and fuck the art of war. Like, pardon my French. He's Canadian, so doesn't matter, I guess. But, you know, he says, look, it doesn't really apply. I beg to differ a little bit. It applies to a lot of strategy and stuff. But he's right in the sense that we're not we're not generals leading an army, right? So, like, while a lot of what he says, Sun Tzu, that is, has merits, merit, 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 um, we need to be focusing more on the practical aspects of all of this, just the same way that we you know, go to Krav, we go to jujitsu, whatever your flavor of choice is, and we get the practicality, right? And we want like the real solid practical techniques, the real solid practical applications. As as warriors, that's what we want. Give me the practicality. Leave all your conjuncture and speculation behind, but give me the practical stuff. Show me what works. Well, the same thing needs to go with our psychological training. 
So I'm not going to sit here and like give you all of my secrets. I'm just not. Um, I refuse to do that. But what I am going to give you a lesson on instead is arguably more important than any of that stuff. And it's something that may sound a little bit, it may have undertones of religion in it. It may have undertones of like, are you sure about that? You sure about that? You sure about that? Yeah, no, I'm sure about it. Um, I'm freaking sure about it. And I know it works. And I know it's the best way to approach this stuff. Some of you guys might not like it. Some of you guys might not find it practical. But I want, if you're one of those guys, I want you to meditate on it. Okay. And I don't mean sit there and um, like, I just mean think about it. Right. I just mean think about it. So really what I think the most, arguably the most important aspect to defending yourself without having to resort to violence is loving your enemy. Yeah, I said it. Okay. I think, I think a very wise man once said that, right? I think a number of wise men once said that, but one in particular, I think we all know, love thy enemy, right? Love your enemy, dude. Like do it, try it. Right. And it doesn't mean you have to like love your enemy, like certainly not get your mind out of the gutter. Don't love them like that. That's reserved for the prison house. All right. And I don't condone. Anyway, listen, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Uh, sort of kind of. So but don't don't love them like that. All right. But I'm saying like when try it out, when somebody really starts like messing with you, right? Like. You've got a choice how you respond. You do. You have a choice how you respond. And sometimes if somebody's deliberately disrespecting you to your face, in your face, well, the only logical explanation or the only logical step after that is you have to do something about it. But a lot of the time, people who do these things, these passive aggressive things, or like for me, like obviously I have my own YouTube channel, taglers, right? Like they want to get under your skin. They leave a comment. They hide behind their little computer. Um, and you don't know who they are, so you can't go fight them. Like you can't even, and then if you engage in them, it's like, well, like what the fuck, man? So you got to love them and you got to, you got to approach these things with a wise mind and a forgiving heart. Because a lot of the times when somebody's like really, you know, really irking you or trying to irk you again. A lot of the wise sages, including a lot of the Stoics, would say that you have a choice of how you respond. And if you respond by giving them what they want, which is fuck you, da, 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 and it's just going to go back and forth and it's going to be bickering like a couple of women, right? We ain't women, all right? And I can tell you that straight up because my I've looked at my <laughs> I've looked at my audience and like, you're not women. <laughs> I wouldn't mind if you were, but like, you're not, all right? So- like the majority of you guys are men who watch this and we're men. So we're going to respond like men and men don't get involved with petty bickering. We don't. And a lot of the times when people do this, like warriors don't do this. Like a warrior might be like, oh, fuck. Like you could lift more than that pussy. Like, you know, like that type of thing, break balls. But we don't, we don't sit there and make little sly comments to each other. Like men don't do that. Weak men do that, Right. That's weak men do that. So you've all you've almost got to approach that with like already you've already won. Because if they were to ever have the courage to say that to your face or say what they actually meant, like right, like a lot of passive aggressive weak men will say like little passive aggressive weak comments, not the type of thing where it would be appropriate to fight them over, but it's meant to irk you. It's meant to get under your skin. And it's meant to have plausible de deniability, right? Oh, I didn't mean that. Eh, you know I'm a nice guy. I didn't mean that. Hey, relax, buddy. That type of fucking weak, like, bitch-made mentality, bitch-made behavior. And, like, that's what we have to deal with. Look, you've already won. And you've got to feel sorry for gentlemen like that. You have to because they're not co complete whole people. They, they Nine and a half times out of ten, they're, they've been deeply abused. Nine and a half times out of 10, they are like not okay. And so you have to feel, it's tough to feel sorry for them, right? 
it's tough to feel bad for them. You can feel sorry for them, but it's tough to feel bad for them because it's like they're pissing you off. And it's like, well, buddy, just get your shit together. Become a man. But a lot of people don't want to become a man. They like acting like a woman. That's who they are. They're more feminine. You've already won. My experience dealing with people like this in real life, in YouTube, like whatever, like none of them have ever been worth even the response, right? But when I do respond, I try to be as loving and forgiving as I can. No, no whatever on that, right? But like, you have to, to some degree, have pity for and love your enemies. And I'm not saying that when I say like, love your enemies, I'm not saying you be totally peaceful, like, that doesn't work. Defend yourself. But know when to engage them and know when to offer them some help. Like when I get people that are like misbehaving, I'm I'm always ready to offer. So I straight up, I say, what, listen, this behavior is indicative of someone who's really hurting inside. Like what, how can I help you? And I mean it. I mean it. That's the thing. It's like, I'm not trying to be condescending. I want to help these people. Um, I would love to show them, like, I'd love to show them some respect that they've obviously never gotten and obviously never given themselves. Because everybody deserves respect. Like, you go into certain environments, and if you don't respect somebody, they're going to hurt you. But those people have never been in those environments. They don't know a thing about it. Generally, they grew up with, like, a single mother or something like that, Right. And this is just dealing with men, men to men, right? I mean, dealing with women, it's similar, but it, uh, it takes a little bit of a different approach. Women, you really have to ignore, honestly. Like, women are like little kids. And if you feed them with attention, they just want more. I mean, that's just the way of it. Like, women are going to misbehave. They're going to try to test you. They're going to try to push you. And feminine men are the same way. But in any case... Ignoring a woman is better than straight out ignoring a man. It's tough. It's difficult to ignore a man because you want to grab them by the throat and slam their head against the wall. But instead, you can offer to, to help them sincerely. You can sit down with them face to face and tell them, look, I know. I know you're hurting, dude. Like, I know. I see it. Like, you wouldn't be making these little sly comments. Like, I know what you're trying to do and I want to help. Tell me how I can help you. Generally, that's enough to, like, fuck them off right there. But you're not doing it because you want them to fuck off. You're doing it because you genuinely want to help them. And this is honestly one of the more effective ways that I've ever found. It, it, it's not a tactic. This takes incredible amounts of self-control and strength, inner strength, right? Because, like, let's face it. We know what we're capable of, gentlemen. We do. Especially you guys who've been training martial arts for many years. Especially you guys who've been doing stuff like judo, jujitsu, you know, rough hand to hand combat training and weightlifting and like military service for decades in some in some cases. You guys know what you're capable of. And you know that when men act like this, it's because they're used to getting away with it. And you'd love to teach them that lesson. You'd love to be that guy who was, there ain't no cameras around. There ain't no witnesses around. Nobody knows you're there. In fact, maybe you got an alibi somewhere and they'll never be able to prove anything. And you're just going to teach them that lesson once and for all, finally, and let them freaking, let them experience it. But life ain't like that. We can't, right? Generally, it's like, this is a controlled society. Surveillance state, cameras, everywhere. like we can't do that. So it forces us to be more Gentile, right? Genteel, Gentile, whatever. But honestly, it forces us to have more compassion. We have to have compassion upon our enemies. If we don't have compassion upon our enemies, we're just like the savages that we're fighting. It's one of the things that makes the United States really great. You know, I mean, we do, don't get me wrong. Like we, we've, <laughs> we're conquerors, but... We have rules. 
the civilized nations in the world have rules, right? Like when we were fighting the Japanese, I got deep respect for the Japanese, but during World War II, we took prisoners. Yeah, sure, we killed prisoners, um, but they would sure as shit torture and kill you, right? We didn't do that. We did, but we didn't really do that. Officially, we didn't do that. Even the samurai had a code of honor, right? Like, they did. And all powerful warriors have some kind of code of respect, code of honor that we have to live by. We have to live by a code of honor. Otherwise, we're the same as the person that we're defending the weak from. We're the same as the people we're fighting. If we don't have that compassion towards our enemies. You know, there's a time to fight and there's a time to relinquish fighting when our enemy is no longer capable of putting up a fight. But I think I got on a little tangent there, but it goes hand in hand with loving your enemy or having compassion for your enemy. Those same men who would stab you in the back gladly to get ahead. You don't trust them. You don't trust them at all. But you have to be smart enough to be able to work with them or use them. And part of that is knowing when to have compassion for them. Hey guys, I appreciate you watching. I'm not going to go too much more into this. I think I've said pretty much everything that I really wanted to say about it. You know, these videos on Wednesdays are going to be more of my philosophy on life and everything. And who am I, right? Like I'm just some dude been trained in martial arts. Uh, I've lived, uh, I've lived, I've lived, right? I've been around. I've done some things. I've seen some things, but I ain't no Sun Tzu, right? But on Wednesday, it's going to be my philosophy, my look on things, my take on things. And then on the weekend, I'll drop a video about hand-to-hand -hand combat. That's the way I'm doing it right now. If you like it, let me know. If you don't, hey, let me know too. Anyway, guys, until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense. And until next time, Stay safe, guys. Have compassion for your enemies and live by a code of honor. Cheers, motherflowers. flowers.